Yeah, yeah. you don't have to yeah. CGI a car. That's you can right. just basically winch it off. On but but they do. It looks great. Nevertheless, I mean, yeah. like Bad Boys Two. I mean, there, there there are you know Matrix or whatever. There are CGI yeah. car stunts, and they yeah. always look like feeble. Yeah. yeah. You know, even in expensive movies, they'll still you know use CGI yeah. car stunts. So it's good to see them being done for yeah. real. And yeah. you know, I thought. Um, I, I don't know. I suspected from the trailer that, su that that even though the CG wasn't really wobbly in the trailer, mm -hmm. I suspected that some of it might be in the movie. Mm -hmm. But actually, I thought yeah. it was pretty, yeah, pretty seamless. Good. I mean, you you know have to pause it to see some of the joins and the yeah. explosions look real mm -hmm. when they s the guy smashes through that window and yeah. you know the like yeah that was all great yeah like, whoa this is like real stuff and yeah. that's why for me I was trying to think what the last movie was that had kind of given me that same feeling and that much bang for my buck mm. without having that sort of doerness of that mm. and it was the Mission Impossible films and funnily enough right, Joe yeah. Carnahan was going to yeah. direct Mission Impossible 3 mm. before um, he and Cruz had a falling out and J.J. Abrams ended up getting yeah. the job right yeah. so jo Joe Carnahan what he probably would have done with the Mission Impossible mm. movie more so than his last film which I, I think was um, shoot him aces. up. Smoking oh, sorry, smoking, yeah, smoking yeah. aces. But also with the A team movie, you say, you know, like all oh, the truck, this. Thing. Like, the thing is, all the things that you have to have in an A team movie were actually in the movie, but yeah. not not necessarily in the order or the sequence yeah. or the way we used it from the TV series. But they do. Yeah. Like, yeah. Spoiler alert: they do like have to bust Murdoch out of a yeah. mental home. You yeah. know, they do have to just build things in twenty minutes. But with it's whatever done in a really have. cool but it, yeah, way. It, it, it's not like it's not like oh, and uh, now now it's this bit. Everyone, it's yeah. like it's just completely flows. It's They've organic. Out how like to get. It's, yeah. it's, it flows really well. Yeah. And that that whole uh, nice voiceover that happens, the explanation. It's yeah. sort of uh, and the quote quoting Gandhi yeah. all those little right, nice little yeah. touches are proper just, proper writing yeah you know not really, just yeah, really all the stuff throwing together the screenplay I mean it yeah. had you know 11 writers I, uh, um, I hear uh, uh, alongside the I think there's two writers credited yeah. one of whom is I think Joe Carnahan yes yeah which means, I know this is boring, but under Directors Guild of uh, Writers Guild of America guidelines, that he wrote more than 50% of the screenplay. Otherwise, he can't get a screenplay right. credit if he's the director. So, right. you know, a lot of this stuff is, is, is down yeah. to Joe. Right. And I've got to say, I mean, I think he does a fantastic yeah. job. I really like the uh, film version of Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Because it's really just fun. And this was, this had the same thing, it was like a slightly more sincere not just ridiculous version of Charlie's Angels, yeah. which just went, let's just be fun. Yeah. And everyone gave it like one star, two stars, they went, it's just stupid, it's just silly. Mm. But that was what that's what you want from yeah. three international globetrotting superhero female secret mm. agents who just like yeah. dress up Basically, and like yeah. have fights with people. So, so what same with the second one. I thought, well, that's like, yeah. what I wanted the, yeah. the, the second exactly one. Just, I, yeah. like, it's almost what like, I liked about you know, first. It's like, when you, it's like, like the sort of film where you go, what do you... When everyone's telling you it's bad, it's exactly the reason you think it's brilliant. Yeah. So I imagine it'll be the same with the A team. That if people don't like it, it'll probably be for exactly the same reason well, that you think it's brilliant. I, I don't know. You know. I don't. I understand why anybody wouldn't like this. I, I really haven't had so much fun in the cinema yeah. since I, I don't know when. It is the most fun film I've seen for for just eons. Absolutely loved it. And. Man. Uh, I think the reviews were a little bit mixed in the states, and the box office was a little bit. But and I, and I, you know, perhaps that's down to the campaign. Perhaps that's down to the fact that they didn't get kids in because it opened against Karate Kid, and that yeah. kind of yeah. obliterated. The but very first review who came love out. This? Yeah, the very first review came from. Uh, Kirk Honeycutt from The Hollywood Reporter, and he's always doing it. It's like it, they come out at five past midnight after he's seen this, this screening, puts it out there, and invariably slags off a film. And so right. that gets reported, yeah. so that people go and read The Hollywood Reporter, but it completely throws things off. Yeah. Because and if you're already predisposed to, uh, like, you know, let's say you, you, you have a, an, an inherent prejudice against movie reboots of yeah. beloved TV shows, then you're already kind of thinking, oh, I bet it's. Yeah. Pant. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, but I went in there actually thinking, I really hope I'm going to like this. I really think yeah. I'm going to... But it, you know, completely from the me moment away. it started yeah. Yeah. to the end. It was, it was great. thoroughly enjoyable. It yeah. was very much an Iron Man thing, wasn't it? Where it was just fun. But yeah. what they managed yeah. to do... But the thing, about, the thing about Iron Man was nobody... Like, people will tell you they do, but they don't. No one reads Iron Man. They right. read it no, now. <laughs> they never true. read it. Yeah. So no they, one cared about Iron Man. So they could just do what they liked. Yeah. Whereas this, they sort of went... Well, we all like the A team, but we don't. You know, let's just do let's just do what the A team is. Let's boil it down to what it is, mm. yeah, and do that, yeah. as best as we can. That's, That's what's yeah. really good about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the elements that they brought to the fore here were always underlying in the series. They were always there, but they piled all the other crap on top of it. So it be, by the end of the, the series, it became silly. But this sort of rock bed was always there. Yeah. They took it, 
pumped it up, turned it around, and it's there. Mm. I always felt that about the, the series, that it, and it never really lived up to its potential. Right. But this movie does. Is that it. perhaps because it was a bit sort of um, stage bound? I mean, it was it was stuck in Burbank basically because it was um, a TV budget. They couldn't go into the yeah to and, Germany. Yeah, and plus they had to churn you know, these things out, and that was the state of eighties TV at the time. Yeah, it wasn't like now where. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, it was a. Uh, Look at an alias where they go to a different. You also yeah. had yeah. the also had the thing with the A Team TV series where half the people complained that it was glorifying violence because no one ever died. Yeah. And the other half of the people were saying well, it's silly, like or because it's no like one it's, dies. No yeah. one dies. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas in this, although they sort of you know people do die because it's like a movie where villains have to get their yeah. comeuppance yeah. and things. But they're nasty. And there's bits yeah. where they're escaping. There is lots of just wild machine gun fire and yeah. people ducking away. But you mm. don't sort of go, oh, I see, you know. Let's shoot the tyres or make a car flip over. Like yeah, you know, when yeah, things yeah. like that happen, you just sort of go, oh, "That's quite, it's quite cool." Actually, a lot of the movie, I was going, "That's really, really cool." <laughs> yeah. Not just that's quite cool. Yeah. Yeah. And and you you said there was a couple of times when you actually wanted to cheer. Yeah. In the yeah. Cinema. Was, we both wanted a cigar at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and Richard said he couldn't sleep last night. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> he was so excited. I got in and like, I was like, he went to sleep with his eighteen <laughs> eighteen yeah. pajamas yeah. on. I wanted to, I wanted to watch a film. What can I watch? I just want to watch the eighteen again. Yeah. Just want to watch the eighteen again. Damn it. It's totally oh, enjoyable. Yeah. Oh. Also, also, can I just say, for the eagle-eyed among you, oh, yeah. there is um, a very cool little Star Trek in-joke in the movie, and if you can spot it, just write we'll it in the comments box. Yeah. 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 yeah, write it in the comments box. It's very cool. And also, uh, there is post-credit footage. Oh, yes. So uh, Damn, stick around yeah, the post-credit footage. You missed so, it. Yeah, and I stayed for like stay a lot of the credits. Stay for it. So I was really annoyed with myself when yeah. Yeah. you know I heard that there yeah. was something. That's kind of, it's kind of cool, isn't it? It's kind of cool, yeah. I mean, it would have been it would have been awesome if it had been in the film. Because it's clear. No, it would have ruined it. If no, it that's true. The, that yeah. would have been too much. Yeah, that it would have uh, been. But would've been but it still would have been still would have been cool. And what about the music? Did you miss the music much? No, Alan Silvestri. Yeah. Wonderful. It's a nice score. But but did you But they hinted at it occasionally. They did. And that's what, that, those are the moments you wanted to go, yeah! Yeah, I know, I actually kind of like, half lifted out of my seat <laughs> yeah. every time I heard... Dun, yeah. dun, but it wasn't dun. like... It was really yeah. sort of like in the trailer, it was very, very No, it was good, because it wasn't like Goldeneye, where you go, when's the Bond theme going yeah. to be? Yeah. This is tedious yeah. without... Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. It's not exciting without that. Yeah. Whereas yeah. this, you're just going, this is great. Like, yeah, it's sort of great. Great. So I, I think it's one of those things where the... Um, uh, the Terminator movies um, suffer if they're not if they don't have the Terminator music. And I did yeah. actually think that Batman Begins really, really missed that great Danny Elfman oh, Batman really? theme. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> even though actually Batman Begins soundtrack's great, mm. I, I thought that yeah. it just it missed the signature. And mm. it, and in the best possible version of any A Team movie, which I really believe this is. I thought you must have the music at least mm. somewhere, and it was there just enough to kind of satisfy that part yeah. of me that thought, yeah. oh, you can't throw out the throw that out completely yeah. because that's just rude. However, you know. it does, over the end credits, there is a great reworking of it by the City of Prague Philharmonic, right. mm. conducted by uh, Alan Silvestri, brilliant, and uh, it sounds terrific, it does sound terrific. So, um, well, we have to give it a rating then. I'm going to say, what are you going to say? Of, out of what, sorry? Out, out of ten. ten. Out of ten. Ten, ten what? Ten, uh, ten black and red vans, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, I don't know, because I would probably say, I'd probably say, is eight out of ten, but that's on pure entertainment factor, not mm. out of you know. You're not going to be writing essays about this as a masterpiece, right. even in the. Is this even in like you know sort of new wave French people think taking it for something it isn't? Yeah. It's not. It's not uh, not a masterpiece of cinema. But, but, but you're it's not trying to compare it to yeah. Obu de Soufflé yeah. or yeah. you know. Uh, it's last, it's uh, one of the most Marion, but... entertaining films I've seen for years. Like mm. I haven't, in, yeah. I haven't in just had a solid two hours of fun like that for. For years, literally, literally years. Yeah. <laughs> so eight out yeah. of ten. I was going to say eight myself. Yeah. Eight, well, eight I, out of ten. I think I gave Green Zone seven, and right. I gave Edge of Darkness eight. So for me, this has got to be like nine, <laughs> bordering <laughs> on ten. Yeah. If if we're talking about uh, you know entertainment, going to see a movie that, as you say, yeah. you you just. Uh, not only stay for the end credits, but you want to stay there for the next screening the next of screen? it as yeah, well. If there's another one right absolutely. after, if not, maybe you know wait a, a week or a few days and go back again with yeah. a different group of mates or even the same group of mates. Yeah, it's yeah. like what I would say is it's like um, when Joey in Friends accidentally rents two copies of Die Hard instead of Die Hard and Die Hard 2. <laughs> and he just says, oh, let's watch Die Hard again. Yay! <laughs> was, I'll be like that with the A-Team. Yeah, Doesn't yeah. matter if a sequel comes out, I'll watch it twice yeah. in a row. I, I'm going with a 9 out of 10. Yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. I love it when a plan comes together. 